Thank you. All right, 936 here on Dell Aware. I'm Peter MacArthur. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thursday, uh, April 29th, by the way, if you're keeping score at home. Number of Americans applying for unemployment benefits dropped by 13,000 last week to 553,000. We haven't seen those kind of numbers in a long, long while. Let's talk with Chris Burkhardt, Placer Staffing. Chris, uh, we haven't talked in a bit. What are you thinking about the, the trending of these unemployment numbers? Well, Pete, first off, happy Thursday morning to you. you it's great to be on. So the continued drop in claims confirms for me that layoffs are on a really fast decline. And I dare say that the narrative is quickly changing from high unemployment to what I would call a war for talent. Uh, the claims are catching up uh, with the business realities that there are a lot of jobs. Uh, they're quite plentiful. You know, consumer confidence is rebounding. It's not quite at pre-pandemic levels, but Consumers are anxious to leave the house, and they have some money to spend. Yeah. Um, I think fear is continuing to dissipate, uh, so more folks can go back to work. What I found that was really interesting to keep is uh, the lowest number of folks, about a half million, reported they could not work due to complications of pandemic. That could be health concerns. That could be child care. And there are two million that can't find work. These numbers are improving each month, and I predict we're going to create a half million jobs a month for the rest of the year. So I think unemployment is going to continue to go down, and, of course, it just creates a different set of opportunities and issues. Yeah, certain, certainly a changing landscape. And you raise good points there, Chris. There are some people still struggling as they try to re-enter the workforce right now. So let me ask you about them and also a kind of a two-parter here. What are they focusing on as a priority to their work situation? Well, I think it's a tale of two cities right now, uh, and I think I'm going to surprise your listeners with this, this discussion point. Employees that are reentering the workforce today have choices, and they probably don't know it. Uh, the workforce is in charge, and what's hard is most of us struggle to manage our own careers, but it's a really good time if you know how to navigate and have great you know, job search skills, that in and of itself can be difficult because not a lot of people like to brag that they got great job search skills. But unemployment is dropping fast. Jobs are plentiful. And I would advise any candidate to try and create two or three opportunities to choose from and pick the one they like best. You can do that in this market. Now, some things have become kind of a standard, but if you're getting off the sidelines right now, it's a digital hiring process. So you got to learn the skills to post and submit your resume online. I continue to see folks that want to drop this stuff off, and the world just probably will never allow it again. Yeah. you got to interview by video. And then, like, just to get paid and stuff, you've got to use technology for hiring. Um, on the negative right now, if you're going back to work, we see it. There can be a lack of confidence that a worker might face that's not worked in a while, that sense that my skills are eroded. And in some cases, you got to get whole new skills, which I've told you is like it's upskilling. And that's that can be really hard for people to face that gap. When it comes to the upskilling, do you need to self um, what's the word? Self evaluate, Chris? Uh, you know, how do you know whether you need that or not? Well, if someone has been unemployed for an extended period of time and, you know, the challenge is, is that a very high percentage of our unemployment is those that are unemployed for longer than, say, 26 weeks. If you're looking for a job with a certain set of skills and you can't find it, then you're probably a candidate that needs to maybe think about getting brand new skills. Yeah. Uh, I think that there are, are what I have found is there are a host of government not-for-profit, and, of course, for-profit placers, places like placers that will help you assess that gap. But it's a mindset. It's scary. Whether you got to learn a new piece of machinery or software or a new skill, it's just hard to change. Chris, I think one of the things that has changed is something that people are having a tough time getting their head around. We're coming out of this pandemic. All these people lost their jobs, and we have employers saying, I can't find enough applicants for these positions I have open. What is going on there? Well, I hope you don't mind me leading with, I, I think, some fairly radical insights. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, the industries that were hurt most, like hospitality, travel, and restaurants, are really rebuilding their workforces. In Delaware, restaurants shed 12,000 jobs during the pandemic. And those workers either got different jobs in different industries, or quite frankly, they're still on the sidelines. Unemployment or remote work, uh, you know, requirements because maybe they're a caregiver. These are still, although it's getting better every day, you know, the challenge, there's still real for many. And it will be until some of these things sort of change. Now, the struggles with most employers in finding enough applicants for their open positions, this is so confusing. Yeah. Unemployment percentages are high. Right. There's, but, but here's the challenge, and maybe this is the radical part. If you were making 13 an hour before the pandemic and you're on unemployment through no fault of your own, you are being paid over $15 an hour by our government. You know, the challenge there is you don't get raises, bonuses, promotions, benefits, or other things. It's not equal. So employers need to find a way to close that gap. And that could be almost $400 more a month to someone. And, again, I understand uh, that there are a lot of folks that really needed that unemployment and helping them get through. But if you're an employer listening to me, that's your challenge. So if uh, we, we look at the entire equation, then you have people, as you mentioned, uh, getting unemployment and such puts them in a certain financial position and it leaves employers in the position that they need to pivot their approach to get these people more excited about their project. Yes. Yeah. And organizations are figuring out how to return to work, maybe work from home policies. They're thinking about more flexibility. But I, I, I have this conversation almost daily, Pete, where, where someone is just so frustrated as an employer that they'll do anything. Wow. And I, I think this will clean itself up yeah. over time, but it's a really unique set of challenges where some folks legitimately can't step back into the workforce, but a lot of us are struggling to find great talent. Some of the things that we spoke to this morning, Chris, may require someone listening to uh, find themselves a guiding hand. And so I'm asking you to let them know about uh, placers and how you might be able to accommodate some of that. You know, I'm happy to do that. Uh, we have a, had a continued placers act of kindness program in place. So if you're an employer and some of this stuff is challenging, be happy to help you think this through. Uh, we've been saying, uh, Pete, that People say, what's your secret sauce in recruiting? And we've just been saying you have to do everything and expect very little from everything. <laughs> yeah. Now, if you're a candidate and you need help with this digital divide, help with your resume or figuring that stuff out, uh, you know, it's pretty simple. Uh, you know, Internet search myplacers.com. Uh, I'm easy to find if you'd like to reach out to me or I've got a an army of great people that would be happy to help you. Yeah, you do. Chris Burkhardt, Placer Staffing in Newark, joining us here on Delaware, like he does to uh, help you find your next job. And I guess, too, we've added to that, if you're an employer, help you find your next employee. So, Chris, as always, I appreciate your time. Thanks, Pete. All right, take good care.